Hi, this is Jerry with I Love RV Life. I have to work while we're out traveling in our RV, and today I want to show you how I set up my portable RV office. Well, hi, this is Jerry. Today I'm going to be showing how I use my portable office in our RV travels. But before I do that, I think there's something equally important that we talk about if we're working on the road, and that's having a good night's rest. Look, if you're going to work six, seven, eight hours, and the night before you were sleeping on that hard, terrible RV mattress, and you got a poor night's sleep or hardly any sleep at all, it's going to be virtually impossible to be productive and create quality work the following day. I have a solution. It's called Brooklyn Bedding by RV Mattress. Look, Brooklyn Bedding has been a fantastic sponsor of ours this year. We're so appreciative of that, but one of the reasons our, our sponsor is we believe in their bedding. We use it. We have one here in our RV. We even have one in our home. It, it got to the point that we were sleeping in the camper and we would go back home and sleep on our regular mattress and it was like, I can't wait to go camping again so that we can have a good night's sleep. So we actually have mattresses in both locations. Look, there's four different types of mattresses offered by Brooklyn Bedding. They have the Dream Foam Essential. They have the Dream Foam Hybrid. They have what we use, the Signature Hybrid, and then they have one called the Aurora Lux. Each one of these mattresses come at various different configurations and different price points. We chose what we have here is the Signature Series, and we have it for a couple reasons. Let me share this with you. It's 11 inches high. Uh, we couldn't have a mattress any taller than that because of the platform size we have. They're coming available in soft, medium, or firm. Joan and I use a medium. We're side sleepers. It works well. But again, I'm all into engineering of products, and the engineering of the signature was real important to us. Let's look at this. First of all, it has a one inch quilted top. It has one and a half inches of Titan Flex Comfort Foam. And this is what's so key about this mattress. It adjusts to your body. Next, they have something called Veriflex Transition Foam. This is for those of us who sleep on our sides or we're a bit heavier. And it gives us that extra compression support. And this is something that really makes the difference with this signature mattress. Depending on the size, you can have up to 961 encased coils. This is what gives that motion isolation and minimizes uh, sleep disturbance. When somebody's moving from side to side, the partner does not feel it. And then to finish it up, it has a quarter of an inch of flex base for added durability. Joan and I love our signature series mattress. Ah, oh, the comfort is amazing. These mattresses have a 120-day sleep trial. They also have a 10-year warranty. They're made in the United States and free shipping. They're easy to get. Go right here, rvmattress.com slash I Love RV Life. And oh, use the code I Love RV Life and get 20% off your purchase. Well, thank you so much for Brooklyn Bedding for sponsoring today's video. Hi, it's Jerry, and I have to work on the road. I have a business. It's a digital marketing business. We do web design and qualified email marketing and some video work for small businesses throughout the United States. And I've had this business for 11 years. And of course, I've got the I Love RV Life uh, part of what we do to serve the RV community and all that results in work that we have to do uh, while we're out traveling in our RV. Uh, we have this little thing we say work a day, play a day. Sometimes it doesn't work that way. Sometimes it's work a couple days um, and then have off a couple days. So it just depends on how we can run our schedule. But the bottom line, I have to work on the road. And uh, we have to have both technology, we have to have workspace uh, to be able to accomplish what we want to be able to do. Here's something that fortunately for me, um, I traveled a lot in my corporate life. Uh, for the long period of time that I was out there flying around in a plane, uh, covering a territory that was Canada, both coasts of the United States, all the Caribbean, and all the way down into uh, Central America. <laughs> yeah, I traveled in a plane quite a lot. 
I had to have a portable office because I was working in hotel rooms or I was working you know in locations that was remote from my home office that I had at the time um, or a lot of times I was working on a plane you know doing what I had to do in between segments so I, I d ended up developing a process that worked very well for me uh, kept me very efficient um, and help me save time because in this business where you consult, uh, time is money. So you don't want to waste time with poor technology or poor processes that slows you down. And then comfort is also very important. When you're sitting in a small space for long periods of time, um, you know, especially where I'm doing this web design and email marketing, um, you know, comfort is key to keep the kind of that creative process going while I'm out doing the work that we have to do. Reliable phone service, all those types of things are very important. Internet is very important. So what I would like to show you today is what we do for a portable office. And it is different from what I was doing a year ago. As a matter of fact, the past eight years, year nine has been a substantial shift since we acquired the Montana. We wanted to do something different. I was going to experiment with it. And we've been doing this for a year now, and it's been very successful. We're very comfortable in this. So I'm going to show you my portable office and then share some processes and just some small technology of what works great for us. And I hope this will help you as well. First of all, let's start with the portable office. Some of this has the obvious. Uh, it had a, a couple little, you know, pockets where, you know, I keep things like, um, you know, the thumb drives and flash cards and those types of things in here. Um, I keep a, a few extra batteries, like I, I need some AA batteries from time to time. Uh, this side pocket over here, I really liked it because this gives me, you know, my iPhone charger cables. Um, hard drive and then a converter. You know, it packs really thin. It's not something that you want to have very bulky. Um, and then we get into what I call the, the business end of, of this bag. Um, this has things like my checkbook, business cards. Um, oh, these are always important. Um, the I love RV life stickers. <laughs> I'm always giving those out while we're out traveling. Ink pens, uh, those types of things are located here. Just It's just very, very basic. You can see inside. I don't need that much. I've got a red pen. I've got a blue pen. And uh, that takes care of what I need. And of course, I finally reached that point in my life that I need reading glasses. And I keep a pair of those in here as well. And uh, I carry this bag to visit with my clients uh, while we're out traveling. This was the, really the selling point for me. Um, I'm going to try to pull this down so that you can see it. I needed a, a place for my laptops, but my travel requirements are a little bit different. And I'll show you these a little bit more in the setup. But I actually have two laptops. Uh, I've got a thin Dell Latitude that I use. This is the business end. This is billing and invoicing, customer contact, those types of things. Uh, this has my QuickBooks on it. So it's thin. This had a dual pocket. And then this is the workhorse. And I'll show you more of this in just a little bit. Um, this is a very large uh, very heavy 17 inch Lenovo Legend. This is a, a big, basically this is a gaming laptop. I needed that for a lot of horsepower to do all my video editing and my Photoshop work. So um, that's, and, and I just love it that this actually has um, two, two pockets that are padded that can protect that. And look, it, it, if you needed something like this, this would be good for, you know, like a tablet, an iPad, or something like that as well. I think that's what it was probably actually designed for. Then I have a middle. This is kind of like a big, a big piece right here. This is what I like. Um, this had separate pockets, if you notice right here, these separate pockets, because I have to have these bricks. Now, you can look at that gaming laptop. This is a giant, oh, goodness, probably eight-inch, heavy-duty brick, very, very heavy. Uh, but again, that PC, even though it has a battery in it, it's going to require a substantial amount of horsepower to be able to make it work. And then I've got the smaller power brick that's located over here. Um, second to that, I've got, um, I use something called a business journal. Um, 
got my business card on it. But anytime I meet with clients or I'm, I'm having a call with someone, uh, I date it. And this just gives me a, a hard written business journal that I can always go back and reflect. Um, I keep my portable hard drives. I'll talk more about these in just a little bit. And then all my business folders. These are my project folders, uh, active project folders, uh, contracts, um, any type of printed material that I have to have. And all this fits in this one bag. And um, it's, 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 it's heavy. Uh, as you would expect, it's got two laptops in it and a bunch of paper, so it is heavy. Uh, but uh, I, it, as you can see, I'm not even using every all the space that's in it, and you don't want to overfill these things too much. Uh, but this works absolutely perfect for me. Um, I've even got pockets here on the side that I have yet to even use. Isn't that great? Uh, I'm, I'm a bit frugal in my space. Um, I don't try to use everything just because I have it, but I have these as well that if I ever need them, I can put some things in here as well. I wouldn't put things like hard drives or anything like that in there, but um, that, that's available for me. All right, you've seen the bag and the portable office. I said about 90% of everything I needed. Uh, let's go right over here to our dining table and let me show you how I set that up uh, for my workspace. Well, I am working from our dining table uh, for a couple reasons. One, we still like to have dinner at the table uh, and we like to entertain. Uh, we can sit four people here comfortably. Um, you know, it lifts up and folds out and has a leaf. Um, we did make a couple changes. We still kept, if you notice, you can barely see it on the corner of the frame here. We did keep one dining chair, but I did replace the one of the dining chairs with an office chair. Um, and this was very, very important because, um, again, I might be sitting here for four, five, six hours sometimes at a stretch. I've even sat here longer. don't like to do that. But, uh, you know, four, five, six hours, uh, try, try to do it in a dining chair. <laughs> that, <laughs> there's not enough padding uh, to be able to work. You want something that you can adjust the arms, adjust the back, um, and be comfortable. Again, uh, I'm in a creative environment, and when you get uncomfortable, you can't create. If you're in a high time demand environment uh, for whoever you may be working for, where you're handling customer calls or um, anything that might you know, raise your stress levels a little bit when you're uncomfortable, that makes it even worse as well. So, you know, this is one of those Office Depot purchases. It was not very expensive. I think maybe $125, something like that to get a good quality chair. I just went to Office Depot. I sat, I sat, I sat until I found something that worked really well. And then it would fit in here as well. So again, we work from the table. I, I'm not going to lift this up right now because of bright sunlight coming in. But it's also nice being able to have a view to the outside world. Uh, sometimes we're at, you know, parked next to a pretty lake or we've got beautiful woods um, or a river. Uh, that's you know right outside the window uh, and it's fun sitting here being able to do that and look outside so it's again it's a very pleasant environment a very nice office space okay so here we're sitting you see I've got my production laptop um, but let me share with you a few things about storage um, whatever you're using to create content it doesn't again it doesn't matter if you're writing blogs or doing video for your own specific needs or if you're doing some type of work for uh, you know clients or your your office uh, where you're wherever you're employed and they're letting you work remotely you're going to have digital assets in some fashion it could be pictures or video or word documents or pdf or just a large spreadsheets just a large volume of things that you do not want to lose and uh, there's a couple ways to be able to to handle that um, I have a client that I do a lot of work for and they have a large server in their business and not only do I keep a copy of the work that I've done for them but I also move it up to their server so if their server was to crash I've got a copy if I was to have a hard di hard drive issue I can always go uh, to their server and get those types of things I have a server as well 
uh, that I can gain access to remotely in my home. I know that that's probably a bit extreme for some parties and you don't need that. Uh, for off-site storage, there's a number of products that you can use. I have a terabyte of Dropbox space that I use. I use that for client sharing and to do backups of certain types of digital assets I have. Um, Google has a number of different things that you can use as far as storage, pictures, um, documents, all those types of things. It's very, very inexpensive. It doesn't cost that much at all. Uh, I think you can go above the two terabyte limit for just something like maybe five, six dollars a month. Don't quote me on that. Uh, my Dropbox, I think, is costing me $9.95 a month, and I even get a month free if I go ahead and pay for it a year in advance. But all that being said, I need work to be able to store things at my desktop. These are called Lacy Drives. Um, what I'm going to show you, I bought, and I'm not an affiliate of theirs. I don't have any links uh, to be able to share with you uh, to them for any affiliate. I just use BNH Photo. I've been using BNH Photo to purchase my cameras, uh, to purchase my laptops, uh, to purchase my hard drives. Uh, just because their service is incredible. Um, I've been buying from them since 2006 uh, when I started doing digital assets and these uh, uh, internet businesses in 2006. And since that time, you know, they've always honored warranties and I always can find good quality product. These are lacy drives or portable drives or hard rubber in case. I'm not going to drop it on the floor and see if it works, but um, they're, they're expensive. Uh, but again, I've got digital assets. I've got one for projects, and if you can see it in the camera, this one says, I love RV life. This is um, six terabytes of storage in this Lacy Drive, L-A-C-I-E. I am a huge fan, um, just to kind of digress for a second, uh, for about 15, 16 years, I was the uh, media specialist for a moderate-sized church and did all their video and audio and graphic design and those types of things. And uh, when we would record sermons on Sunday mornings, uh, we had to store those uh, sermons uh, digitally on hard drives. And that's where I found Lacey and used it exclusively um, at the church that I worked at for quite some time um, as a volunteer. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, we use Lacey and I've just been sold on them ever since. They're fantastic. So this is what I call my work drives. Uh, they're USB-C. Uh, they're very, very fast. And um, I can put assets on this, run them through my digital editor. Uh, I can work Photoshop. I can do all those things. And the response is instantaneous. Super, super fast. Let me show one other thing. I have to have a local backup. Yeah, I've got remote servers and things like that. But, but um, if uh, something were to happen and I've got a slow internet speed or I just can't get internet at all and I have to do some work, um, on rare occasions, I, I can count on one hand how many times I've had to do this where I had to do my work and then drive somewhere with a hot spot um, and then upload that to the client or upload it to the cloud. Uh, but I had all my digital assets with me to where I could be able to do that work, whether it's Word documents or contracts or spreadsheets or Photoshop files or on and on and on. I had all that at my fingertips. So this is primary, but I also have secondary. These are, um, there's a number of different cases. This is a hard foam inside case. Um, I buy these at um, Harbor Freight. They're inexpensive, uh, but they're built really, really well. And what I have inside here are these Western Digital hard drives. These are a 10 terabyte hard drives. I've got one. This one says Projects. And then I have a second one in here for I Love RV Life. Again, they're USB-C, very, very fast drives. And uh, depending on the project that I'm working on or the I Love RV Life file, um, I will save weekly uh, on these drives. That way, if this fails, I've always got uh, a large asset backup. Now, probably 90% of the folks that's watching this, or if you're not doing you know, a lot of digital asset work, this will not be necessary. Uh, you can use a regular hard drive. Um, you could use something like Dropbox or you know, your, your Google Space to do your backups on. 
and just basic documents and things like that would be fine. So you would use this as primary and use something else uh, as your backup. Or you may just have a laptop, let's say with a terabyte hard drive and a terabyte is all you need. And you could use something like, you know, a small terabyte drive. I would not back up to a thumb drive. Um, they do have a life to them. I'd use something like a quality lace so you can get these smaller and they don't cost as much as this you know, expensive one here does uh, with a lot of space on it, but it'll save you a lot of space. So backup, backup, backup is really important for your assets. Um, I have, as you notice in my bag, I only had about that much paper um, that I carry with me and probably half of that is the manila folder in size. Everything that I deal with clients is done in PDFs and is stored on a hard drive. If they ever need to have reference to it, I can always email it back to them. Um, so when I save a document, I save it as a PDF. Um, I don't scan. I carried a scanner with me for three years and used it maybe twice. So uh, if I need to scan something or if, if there's that rare occasion I need to fax something, rarely receive a fax, I, I, it just hardly ever happens. Usually somewhere within the location that I'm at, um, there is either you know, a UPS office, a, one of these business uh, offices that you can go to and you can pay the dollar a page or 50 cents a page, whatever they're charging to send or receive faxes. Or if you need two or three pages scanned, however you got that, let's say you got a piece of mail and you've got to scan that, usually they charge you 50 cents for a dollar a scan. But seriously, in nine years of travel, I think I may have had to do that two or three times. Um, one was, um, uh, you know, official documents, one dealing with a death and one dealing with some sp specific business things on a, a home sale. And other than that, I've never needed it. I've never needed something like that. So I don't carry a printer. Um, I don't carry a scanner. I don't carry any of those types of things. It's just not important to my business. Okay, now let me show you the setup that I use here. Um, here again, this is a Lenovo Legend. This is um, a workhorse. I won't go into all the specs. You can go to Lenovo. Um, I've used Lenovo laptops for a long time. Prior, prior to this, if you look at some of my older videos, I had removed the dining table. I had built this super nice custom desk uh, that I used, and I had a custom uh, video editing PC that I used for all my Photoshop work and all my video editing. And uh, it was wonderful. I had dual monitors. It was great. Uh, but it took up a lot of space and we lost our dining space and we always missed it. Uh, we, we really did. Uh, the handful of times that we entertain, it's wonderful to have it. Um, and um, I can kind of clean this off real easy, you know, slip it in the bag, boom, I'm done and I can go on to work. Now, working like this for me off of a laptop for the type of work that I do, um, is is just not a pleasant experience. I do have the big 17 inch screen, so I've got plenty of real estate here, but I you know, raise my chair a little bit and I can't work with my head bent down. That's just not comfortable. You get a lot of stress in your neck. And then using these small keyboards um, are cumbersome to me as well. It just slows down. Again, I, I keep sharing this, time is money. Um, and it's not necessarily that I'm charging somebody by the hour to do work. I do that from time to time, but I can't sit here and burn a lot of hours and expect to be compensated for that. A lot of the work that I do is fixed fee. Um, and if I can get it done in an hour, that's great. If it takes me three hours for the same fee, that's bad, is it not? Um, but the other thing where I talk about time is money too is we travel in an RV. The last thing I want to be doing is wasting time at this desk and not to be able to go out and travel. So time is money in a lot of different ways. So let me show you the setup that I use here. These, um, these little laptop tables uh, come in a number of different fashions. I tried two or three different types. This is called a Boyata, B-O-Y-A-T-A. Uh, I bought it off Amazon. Uh, I tried a couple different types. So one of the things I liked about this, it is adjustable in height so I could set the height that I wanted. It's good aluminum structure. Uh, it's got these little rubber pads on the bottom that keep it from scooting. And I can set my laptop at eye level. Uh, this is wonderful. I, I cannot share how nice it is 
to be able to look straight on into the screen and work. Are you working like that? No, just, just hold on. I'll show you that in a second. Just to be able to sit like this, and this removes all that tension and stress in the back and the neck of you know working with your head bent for long periods of time. Um, this is wonderful. I, I just absolutely love it, and it takes a lot of the eye strain out as well. Again, I'm looking straight on, and you can set it up. But, um, as you notice, I don't want to work like this. I, I'll show you the fix to that. Uh, you can get these just about anywhere. You can get this from Walmart. You can get it from Amazon. Um, I think I bought this at, at one of the big box, like a Sam's uh, or Costco. I can't remember. I've had it for a while. Um, and this is a wireless keyboard and a, a wireless mouse. And this is a game changer. Uh, this makes work super, super nice. I've got a decent mouse that I can use. Again, if you're just using basic Word documents and things like that, and you can work from your pad, uh, that works great. But I'm doing a lot of digital work where I'm drawing, um, you know, on Photoshop or doing those types of things, or I'm dealing, moving large blocks of graphics for web design and those types of things, and I need a, a good responsive mouse. Surprisingly, this little small mouse is extraordinarily responsive. Um, it's, uh, it, it doesn't require a pad. I can use it here on the table. It works really great. Um, I can flip these little levers up on the keyboard and stick them in here. Inside um, uh, of this, inside the battery compartment, is just a little Bluetooth device. You can see that. Can you? <laughs> That's all it is to it, that little thing right there. And I plug it into one of my USB ports, and um, I turn the... the turn the laptop on and that's it and I am working. Um, I hook a cable up to this and plug it into one of my USB-C ports and I am, I mean I'm working. This is such a comfortable comfortable environment to work on. I've got great um, eye connectivity to the screen uh, with this large, again, I'm using a 17 inch screen. Uh, I prefer that for, you know, you know, digital management. And then, of course, I'm a lefty. Um, I can use my, um, use my mouse here to be able to do whatever I want. This is a great setup. I, I take my bag. I've got it sitting here in the floor. Um, I've got it to the left of me up against the wall that I'll keep it there and I can always pick out things. I've got enough space, if you can see, you know, right over here that I can use um, my little, um, I call it my business journal uh, that I can sit here. Um, these are just, you know, you can get the big ones or the small ones. This is a mid-size one. Um, and I can put it here and I can do my work and I can, again, I'm a lefty, I can take my notes. Um, I use an iPhone. You know, I can talk to my clients. I do use an earbud um, that uh, I use, you know, so I can type with two hands and talk with them in meetings. And I can sit here. Um, if you can see right here, there's a window frame here with a, one of these black uh, blackout pull down shades. So I can sit here and do my Zoom calls or, or my go-to meetings or uh, my uh, Google Meetups, whatever the client chooses to use to be able to do face-to-face -face conference calls and to do screen interactions and sharing. This is absolutely a wonderful, wonderful uh, environment to be able to work in. And I can take it down in five or six minutes, you know, and then we can have a dining room table. Usually it's set up for a day or two and then it might come down for a day or two. That's typically how we work. Um, so this is a, a wonderful environment. You know, that's, that's, I'm shutting down for the day. I put my keyboard in here and then, uh, you know, it's just, it, it just works out fantastic for me. So I've talked about, you know, having a comfortable workspace, uh, laptops, keyboards, those types of things, your portable office, all that's very important. Uh, to be able to get the job done. Uh, but what I haven't talked about is communications. Yeah, communications is probably my single most expensive recurring item that I have in RV travel and my business. It's very expensive, you know, from cell phones to my internet data needs, those types of things. Well, I use an iPhone. I used Android for a while. I've got one of those Verizon, you know, unlimited everything you can use plans. It works well. Um, Verizon for us for where we travel, I'll say 95% of the time uh, we've got good coverage and I can get my voice calls done and those types of things. It does have uh, unlimited internet on the phone uh, and it does have a hotspot feature that I can use which I think is 
25 gigabits. It might be 50. I'm not sure because I never use it. Um, and the reason that I don't use it is uh, I need to work on the phone. Uh, sometimes we're in limited space areas uh, where we're out in the woods somewhere and you get inside uh, the, the fifth wheel and I just don't get enough cellular coverage. I got one or two bars and uh, either that or in, we're in a very remote location and the cell tower just does not have a lot of uh, data to serve the phone well and I just can't get enough bandwidth from the phone from a signal perspective to work for me uh, for my specific needs. Yeah, I, I could move some basic files, do those types of things, but it just doesn't work. And when I'm on the phone and I'm working with a client, sometimes I might have a one hour design call, something like that, uh, or we're doing updates. I, it, it's just difficult to work on the phone, use it as a hotspot and do all those types of things as well. It just doesn't work for me. So. There's a couple things you can do uh, depending on what your specific needs are. Um, I use this for a long time. Uh, this is a, a jetpack, an old Verizon jetpack. I still carry it just in case um, that I can put my uh, SIM card inside that. Uh, whether you're T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T, whoever you may use, uh, there's various hotspot plans that you can buy into and they have various bandwidth needs and they're just dedicated, you know, uh, 25, 50. I've even seen some that go as high as 100. They're expensive, they're expensive, but if you're moving a lot of data and that's what you need to be able to do your work or do some entertainment, um, you're gonna have to go to something like a hotspot plan. Now, again, if you're just traveling on weekends, you're doing your one or two week vacations in your RV, more than likely, your phone, if you've got one of these unlimited plans with hotspot, look, that's going to work great for you. First of all, you know, you can set your phone up. You can do your Zoom calls or your GoToMeetings or your Google Meetups. You can do that on here. Nobody will know the difference. You know, take the one collared shirt that you took on vacation with you, you know, and you can sit here and do your work. Um, and get that done and it'll work fine for you. Um, and if you've got, you know, you took your laptop with you and you've got to move a little bit of data up and down, emails, check those types of things, uh, the, the hotspot plans on this will work fine for you from that perspective. But if you're the digital nomad and you're out there doing a lot of work remotely, such as what I'm doing, moving very, very large files, you're going to have to go with some type of a hotspot plan. And again, there's varieds out there. I'm fortunate. I started doing this back in 2014 and the uh, Verizon plan you can't buy anymore. It's grandfathered and um, I pay a, a very reasonable price for it and it's all you can use with no cap. Uh, but those don't exist anymore, that's gone. Um, I've got an AT&T plan that I use as a backup. And um, same thing, it's an unlimited plan with no caps and it's grandfathered. Look, these things could go away at any point in time. I hope they don't, uh, but I use the Dickens out of them. I've got some that I use 700, 800 gigabits of data on that thing. That is a lot, but I'm also using a lot of files, doing a lot of work. Uh, during the month and these video files that I send up are huge and then a lot of the stuff that I use for my clients is huge so there's a lot of activity going on on the internet. Now I don't use this anymore I use this. This is currently what I'm using it's a MoFi 4500 uh, you may have seen this in a video in the past and then I use an external antenna here you can see that as well and um, this is what I would call a business enterprise style of uh, cellular based router. It works fantastic for me. It's done a good job. Now this one's getting dated. The technology is getting a little long in the tooth uh, and I'm going to be retiring that here within weeks. But uh, up until now and still right now it works fantastic for me. Um, it is a 4G uh, LTE only. I can't go 5G with it. Um, and then there's some other advancements that's gone on since we bought this a couple years ago um, that a number of improvements have come out that allow these to work much better, much faster. And I'm looking forward to be able to share that with you as well. Now, the thing about this cellular router is uh, we just plug it in and go. I've got an external antenna, high gain antenna that's mounted up on the roof. Um, and uh, it works just like Wi-Fi in your home. It's just fantastic with a 
uh, with a hotspot SIM inside of it, a Verizon, my, my Verizon hotspot SIM that came out of this. Works fantastic. I'm very happy with it. Uh, and it served me very, very well. And we use it for entertainment as well as business. So the probably the thing that I haven't answered yet is, Jerry, why aren't you using Starlink? I would love to use Starlink if it worked all the time the way we travel. Uh, here on the East Coast, uh, probably better than half the campgrounds that we were at this year uh, in 2022. I had a ton of tree coverage. No Starlink and tree coverage. It will not work. Um, the deployment of satellites on the East Coast has not been as heavy as out on the West Coast, uh, especially out in the desert and things like that. Um, we were in Florida back in August and I talked to a neighbor that was across uh, and we had a big race in Daytona that weekend and um, he had tons of congestion problems. He was an unhappy camper, uh, no pun intended, but he was really, he was really, really upset because his bandwidth dropped from like, you know, a hundred to something like twos and threes and he was having trouble just being able to watch TV, which was his primary use for using that as well as some work uh, too. But um, again, I think for my style of travel and where our needs are and we spend more time on the East Coast than we do going out West, um, it just, Starlink is just not ready for us yet and it may never be. Um, the thing I like about our setup right now is I just turn the power on and boom, we've got it. It works. Um, with Starlink, I'm going to have to go out and I'm going to have to set up the dish you know, and go through all the steps for you star linkers that are out there that you've got to do. It's probably not that big of a deal, but if you're moving every, you know, week or two, um, then that's just an extra thing that I don't have to do to be able to get bandwidth. And I know all you folks out there in the desert using Starlink, that thing is rocking and rolling and working fantastic for you. And I envy you. I wish that I could use it and get it. Look, the, the, the service that I have with my LTE um, is good. It works very, very well. It's about half the price of what I would be paying for Starlink on a month-to-month -month basis. Um, Equipment-wise, it depends on which Starlink you're getting. Some of these Starlinks are getting very, very expensive, uh, and I can use my uh, equipment, which is mm, maybe about half the price of what a Starlink setup is. Um, the other thing uh, that I'm concerned about with Starlink, and we'll see, we'll see how this gels out, is that RV thing that you've got to purchase. It costs you extra for it, and then you're kind of put in a lower tier if you get into some congestion. For some reason, we RVers are penalized uh, by Starlink by being mobile and not being fixed at home, and then they charge us a premium for it. Hmm, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite, quite sure how that works, but um, again, Starlink is not going to fit my application right now. I'm looking forward to showing a new cellular setup here in a couple weeks. The, I've already received the new antenna. It's a newer, higher gain antenna. I'm excited about that. The, uh, the router's on the way, uh, and I look forward to be able to receive that as well and then get that hooked up and test it, and I'll be showing you the results of that very, very soon. Um, I'm really, really excited about it. Okay, I think that's enough for today. Uh, comfort, technology, uh, having backup is key. That portable office, you know, something that you can pack and take out and put back up and know where everything is at. You don't have to dig for it and spend hours trying to find something. Um, and then having good communications that is affordable for your specific needs. Don't go out and buy more than you need just for it to be able to set up and buy enough that you need that um, you can get things done and don't have to go sit in a coffee shop somewhere. That's a horrible way to do business if that's the way you've got to do it, especially day after day after day. All right, hope you found this helpful. Portable office, love mine, works great. I love RV life too.